Hello and welcome to Caravanery. This video is part of our Caravanning in France playlist and in this video we're going to focus on one thing and that is how you go about booking a trip and planning a holiday in France. Some useful tips for you and hopefully to help the, the whole process a little more painless and a lot more enjoyable. So welcome to Caravanery. Hello guys, welcome. Uh, in this video we're looking at five simple steps to break down planning a holiday to France because for some people, in all honesty, it can be quite daunting. When I speak to friends and other touring caravanners, I think when we say that we're going to France in the summer for, for holidays, it sounds great, it sounds really exciting, but I think that the feedback we immediately get is, oh, it's, it's a bit of a long way to go. How are, you going to, how are you going to get across to France? Where are you going to stay? Are you going to have stopovers? And all these questions, driving on the wrong side of the road, etc, etc, etc. So what we wanted to do with this video is to break it down into five very simple bite-sized chunks as to how we go about booking a holiday in France. So without further ado, let's step into step one. Okay, so step one is quite simple and in all honesty, what you would do for any normal holiday. How long are you going to go for and what's your budget? If you can, one top tip is to book 12 months in advance because you'll have um, a bigger run of availability on sites, you'll have better deals when it comes to ferry crossings, and it'll give you a little more time to plan and prepare things, um, including the journey and all the other things we're gonna cover in this video. So, when it comes to booking a holiday, you obviously need to know how long you're gonna go for because if you go in for a week, we wouldn't recommend you go in all the way down to the south of France, but if you go in for three weeks, then why not drive around a bit further, plan and break your trip down accordingly. So the most important thing, as with any project, um, project manager by trade, is to break it down based on time scales and budget. So once you get a good grasp of those, it'll help you answer a lot of the other questions that we focus on within this vlog. Myself and Jody have booked two and a half weeks off work, so we'll have a two and a half week trip around France. And when we went away for our, for our first two week jaunt uh, summer holiday last year, we found we went to three different places, three different stop offs, which meant three different pack ups, pack downs, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then when we sat down in the last of the three venues we went to, we sort of said to each other, well, we've spent kind of three days of this, this two week holiday just traveling around, packing up and packing down. So what we decided to do when going to France is two and a half weeks because we want to go all the way down to the south of France. It's a 1,000 mile journey door to door and we wanted to make sure that we break it up with a few stops but that still doesn't impact on us having a two week holiday. So we've saved up our leave and everything else accordingly just to make sure that we get a full two week holiday and still fit in that road trip and traveling um, from A to B as well. Okay, so step two. Obviously, when you get to France, you're going to need somewhere to stay. So deciding whether you go north, south, east or west will depend on how far you want to travel, how much time you have to spend in the country and how long you want to spend in the car once you land on the other side of the channel. Fortunately, to help you decide where to go, you've got a range of tools, apps and websites you can use to make the entire process of booking and planning a holiday that much easier. Okay, step number three, making your bookings. The first thing to do is to book your ferry crossing because that marks kind of the beginning of your holiday in France and the end of your holiday in France. So then you know how much time you've got to play with, what time you're arriving in the country and what time you're departing. So then if you need to book additional sites to cater for travel, you can do that. Okay, so the first booking we made was the site in the south of France. And we did that based on the dates that we wanted to get there and leave. And to do that, I used Google. I looked at caravan sites, caravan parks south of France, looked at the ones we liked the most and made bookings. But please bear in mind, as we found, that there may be availability on the website, but the website might be slightly out of date. So if you make a booking, there's every chance until they come back and confirm it that they could say, sorry guys, uh, we've actually booked that, that pitch out, which is what happened to us. Um, originally, we tried to book a site actually on the sand um, on, the, on the beach, but unfortunately, that was fully booked. And in hindsight, it's probably a better uh, outcome because we're now in a, in a shaded area, but a, a, literally a two minute minute walk from the beach. So that's worked out really well for us. For the other sites, we used the Camping and Caravanning Club website. We tried to do that for the site in the south of France, but 
all of them were fully booked. So that's when I went on a bit of a Google troll. The Camp and Caravan and Club site has got a really good overseas um, facility where you can look at sites and just, just search by region. So I looked for somewhere quite central, found Burgundy to be good. It's just off one of the main roads that that's on our route. So it's, it's going to be quite, quite a quick one to get to and it breaks the journey exactly in half going downwards to the south of France. And on the way back up then, we decided to bite the bullet and have a one long stretch um, from the south of France to Paris. It's going to be a long day, but ultimately then it's just one day of driving and then we've got three nights in Paris to look forward to. And to book both of those sites in Burgundy and then the outskirts of Paris, we used the Camp and Caravan and Club website and found that a really useful and straightforward tool. Step number four, gearing up for France. There are a range of specific rules and regulations that you need to follow when you're driving in France. We've covered this in a previous video where we went through this little gizmo that we bought from um, Aldi. So we've got all the pack that we need in one in one go and we've put together a list of all the other bits and pieces that we need to get as well, which we'll feature a link to in the description. But really to bear in mind the fact that you will need additional extras, you will need breathalyzers, you will need a GB sticker, you will need high-vis vests, but just a little guide for you there to help you along with that in addition to the previous video that we've done on the Travelling to France um, playlist. Okay, step number five, plan the route. Now, that's really, really important in that planning the route is going to save you a lot of stress, a lot of hassle, and also maybe quite a bit of money as well when you consider the tolling system that's in place. There's a previous video which we'll put a link to um, on the SANIF tolling system and a bit more detail on that. But also make sure that if you are using a sat-nav, that you've got um, it enabled for the for France and it's all set up accordingly and you've downloaded the latest version. But also, in linking up to previous videos, use a map. This is never ever going to drop out the charge, lose coverage. Um, and what we do as well is we like to just um, highlight the different routes that we're gonna take from A to B and making sure that that's all done properly. So you know exactly what to expect before you get the other side of the water and there's going to be less stress and hassle then when you're driving from A to B and also when you plan your new route it could save you a bit of money on the toll front as well because the faster more central routes tend to be the ones that are more expensive but then something maybe you want to drive in a more more sort of country route slightly more winding roads and take your time and take in the scenery the choice is yours but there are pros and cons in terms of time scales and costs as well. Okay, thanks for watching guys. The, the, the final step, I suppose, is have fun. Do whatever it is that you enjoy doing. If you enjoy climbing a mountain with a bottle of wine in your hand, then book a site in the Alps near a vineyard. If you enjoy being by the sea and on the beach reading a book, book somewhere coastal. Just do a little bit of research before you go away. Understand the kind of holidays that, um, that you really enjoy going on and make it happen when you make all your bookings and, and you do your planning. And whatever you do, guys, if you are enjoying the videos, please hit subscribe, please leave a thumbs up, or ideally even please leave a comment. We love to get feedback from uh, people watching the videos. I'd just like to say a massive thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful in terms of breaking, breaking down the, the various um, steps to booking a holiday in France. And whatever you do, guys, above all things, make the most of your time. Thank you. Step number four. And by the way, there's just 10 days to go until we go to France. Just 10 days. And I'm not excited at all, really. Okay, maybe I am a little bit excited.